Today I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between pH and temperature. And this isn't going to be a very long video, but I just wanted a chance to kind of talk about the relationship sort of contained, self-contained. So we're just going to look at temperature and pH because this is an important relationship and it really comes from this autoionization of water. Another way to write the autoionization of water is just with a single reactant here. You can kind of think about it as the decomposition of water into its component pieces. It's the same equation, right? It's just balanced with one fewer water, and that's um, it's still the same thing. So instead of giving you hydronium here, it just gives you the hydrogen ion, which is still going to give you the same Kw value, that 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, which is kind of that magic number. We even give it its own subscript here, W for water. And this is the value at 25 degrees Celsius, which is kind of that standard thermodynamic temperature that we use. 25 is kind of the standard. Um, it's different than STP for gases, which is zero degrees Celsius. But when we're thinking energy and equilibrium and chemical processes, 25 is kind of the go-to. Slightly warmer than room temperature most of the time. Okay, so the thing we need to remember is that an equilibrium constant is given at a specific temperature because it is temperature dependent and we get that from Arrhenius right so the same Arrhenius that defines acids and bases the Arrhenius equation says there's this relationship between the temperature and the rate and kind of the activation energy and all these kind of interconnected things so this equilibrium constant then is temperature dependent And because we use this equilibrium constant to calculate the pH, then the pH also is temperature dependent. So that means that the pH of my water is going to change if I'm not at 25 degrees Celsius. So 25 degrees Celsius, my pH of my water is going to be 7, but it might not be if I'm at um, different significantly different temperatures than that so let's look at an example and again we're just going to look at the one that kind of gives you a sense of how this works and how it's all interconnected so um, the internet is a strange and wonderful place but one of the many things you can find are the different kw values for different temperatures so if you're ever looking for a fun thing to do on a saturday night then you can kind of see the different kw values and how the ph is influenced by that so you can do that by pick a temperature let's say at 45 degrees celsius i went and looked up the kw value it's 3.9 times 10 to the negative 14th now if you look at these two not significantly different in terms of orders of magnitude but it's going to be different enough that it's going to have an impact on the ph so if we think about our ice box for this equilibrium then we're going to ignore the pure water because it is uh, pure substance so our initial concentrations of these guys let's call that zero we're going to go up by plus x for each of those so x and x so when we plug these in our kw for water here is equal to the concentration of my hydrogen times the concentration of my hydroxide. Right, and I'm not going to include my water again because it's a pure substance. So it tells me that um, at 45 degrees it's 3.9 times 10 to the negative 14th. And that is equal to then x squared, so x times x here. x is my concentration of hydrogen, x is my concentration of hydroxide. So when I take the square root of each of these, then I end up with my x is equal to plus or minus um, 1.97 times 10 to the negative seventh. So um, if I'm thinking about significant figures, I'd like to kind of round them before I end up going to my logarithm. So I'm going to round up here to 2.0 times 10 to the negative seventh here for my concentrations. So what I just solved for is the concentration of my hydrogen ions. So it's a concentration, so it has units, right? And that concentration is going to give me my pH. So my pH is equal to the negative log of my concentration of hydrogen, which is the 2.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. 
and so I have two significant figures in my concentration. So when I plug this in and I take the negative log of it, I end up with 6.72. And again, two significant figures with logarithms come from the places after the decimal. So this has two significant figures. Six is kind of my placeholder on my pH scale. All right, so we can see then that the temperature increased from the normal thermodynamic kind of conditions where we know that water is pH of 7 at 25 degrees Celsius, but at 45 degrees Celsius, it's got a pH of 6.72. So it got warmer, water got slightly more acidic. So this is something to uh, keep in mind that pH is temperature dependent, and we can see that and play around with it with the different Kw values that are listed at the different temperatures. So you can kind of see what it looks like if you go colder, you can see what it looks like if you get up towards boiling, and then see how, how much of an impact that um, that temperature has on the pH. So that's all I wanted to say in this video. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon.